so um, because of this whole like being tethered to this guy for, for 14 days. She noticed that my um, breath smelled like a goddamn wildebeest. <laughs> <laughs> some animal on the veldt of was, some kind. Were there any... Like a pit viper. Were there any moments where like there was tension because you're chained together or... Or were there any moments where was was there a moment where it was like, oh, now we get this chemistry of moving? You're I mean, trying you to guys out her and ask her to make say I'm a dick. I, I really, <laughs> no, because we all know you're a dick. I don't need her to say that. Um, As credited in Jimmy's Basement, I think it's true. Yeah, if you watch Jimmy's Basement, Tim's credit is Dick. Um, but yeah, I mean, was or was there like a process you had to go through to, in order to get that sort of like. You know, cause it's like a dance. You guys have this wire between the two of you, mm-hmm. and wherever he and there's a lot of movement of the oh, camera. Yeah. I mean, there were a couple times like we had to be yeah. audio, like f- well, well, yeah. bring up my did, previous it, films. The biggest criticism I've ever gotten is your camera's always on, on, on sticks, and you're sitting <laughs> on a couch. If you're watching these podcasts, you've seen my previous. The irony films. of it all. But um, you know, so one of the things we made a very deliberate decision to be is movement oriented as possible. While still serving the story, you know, we put the move in movie. So, I mean, how was that as being the, you know, audio person being kind of mm-hmm. chained to him? He's driving, he's making these decisions, kind of where he's going. Did you guys have to do a lot of like coordination to plan that out? Uh, yeah, was there... it, yeah, it did take a while to get used to. Because um, when we first started, I hadn't read much of the script. I wasn't sure like exactly what. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, but I hadn't uh, read it when we first started, so I wasn't sure, like, even what we were shooting exactly. I just knew where the camera was at that time, and then, like, he'd start moving, and the wires would get tangled, and we'd have to sort them out, and we're, like, elbowing each other trying to get stuff <laughs> right. But by the end, um, we got it figured out. We, I think even way earlier than the end, actually. Yeah. Luckily. <laughs> yeah. It, it'll now we're ready to shoot this thing. Oh, out. it's over. Uh, yeah, I knew exactly where he was going to be, and we um, had it figured out pretty well. Like, if he was moving around we just it was kind of like a choreographed dance how you'd say yeah um, yeah well, sometimes we just unplugged the wires too and it was much easier if yeah. you had to figure something out yeah just well yeah. it's like yeah we developed a pretty shorthand much like you and i kind of have the communication <laughs> we got a communication yeah. pretty early on and just I'd and imagine she was you just kind of have to you, know you, you mean? have to you... or else it would have it would have been tough and it was uh, all the other pinch hitters for Kelly did just fine, but she obviously was the rock star of the thing. Yeah, it was like, if, when you watch the film... Although she got offended, I think, when I said you could be replaced with an 18-cent piece of plastic. Uh, yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My communication, too, I just kind of... I didn't necessarily know. I just... And I'm used to run and gun. And, you know, I'm like, okay, I think I'm going to go that way. <laughs> you know? Mm-hmm. And so she had the dual job, making sure that I never had tension on the camera itself while I'm trying to move, and, like, keeping the boom, the freaking... The boom is not particularly heavy, but just holding that thing, try to even just hold your empty arm out for like a minute straight. Try it. You won't do it. That's why this one, you could cut diamonds on that shoulder. <laughs> it's pretty true. I mean, she's, and like her at rest position was just, she'd like drop the boom, let the, you know. Yeah. And she could just the stand there. Sit on her and, shoulders. And you know, that's how the Kelly bot nickname started. Mm-hmm. Right. Cause we were, she's like a machine. Yeah. Well, see, we were, uh, we were, we had a way crazy lighting setup to get figured out. And little Miss Johnny on the spot here had audio figured out immediately. So she's got some stand around time. And so stand she does. And, you know, normal people would perhaps sit. <laughs> Kelly kind of stood there. And it was like into the shoot a bit. So we were spacing out a lot. And tired. Working a job. Going to school. And helping mm-hmm. us at 17 hour days. And as I walked by her, I noticed her posture is just not changing at all. <laughs> yeah, her okay. face is just kind of boom. <laughs> like she just shut and up. And I'm like, that's kind of doing some weird things to my head here, man. <laughs> so we started the Kelly Bot and Kelly ends up out of Wally. And then there was every science fiction fucking cliche. There was a lot. Be, tell, tell me of love, Kelly Bot, you know. There was a lot of uh, no short circuit references. Yeah, a lot of disassemble. Uh, I'd say probably 90% of what you'll hear in the final film is audio that was recorded by, yeah. by Kelly. and then Which is 5% more than Inception got on there. Right. <laughs> So and, uh, you know, we had, like, Jose, I think, filled in for, like, one or two days, mm-hmm. you know, it was pretty much... Yeah, we had some other had folks who just kind of uh, had to... And they did great, they did great, but they didn't have the savoir faire or know the rhythms yeah. or... Julie filled in for a day. For yeah. No, Jessica uh, held the boat and Julie was script supervising, so... Um, but, uh... The kings of kings, but, yeah. I know, I know one particular instance, it was kind of funny, I, I felt sorry for you, actually. It was, uh, it was one of the more awkward and hot, and I do mean that in a very literal sense, scenes... <laughs> You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. What was, anyway, we're filming uh, 
a love scene slash sex scene, whatever you want to call it. And, um, well, it was a cramped, tiny room once again. You'll notice this springs up in our narrative quite often. Um, it was hot as shit in there, because we, were, we weren't lighting it like a horror movie, like most of the time, with two bladed 150s, as you like to hear everybody <laughs> say. We actually tried to light it a bit soft right, and right. warm and naturalistic, and not totally full-on boudoir glamour photography shit like that. But we didn't want it to look porny. Right. You know what I mean? But no, we didn't we want it to, to look, look comfortable and warm and sensual. And it was, it was a, I often had like the two worlds approach. This was the good world. Right. <laughs> right outside, I, as soon as she leaves the door, you see the bad world. And I'll get into that more later if anybody actually gives a shit. But anyway, and it was a nude scene. And so Travis and I and uh, Steven were the only males. And, uh, right. you know, it was a whole female staff. And, um, while we were reviewing it, and we we're trying to be as quick as possible, my God, those lights are throwing off a lot of heat and everything. And like the that. doors closed. We had to shut off the ceiling fan for noise concerns. Yeah, I think it was. Mm-hmm. right. Um, and we've got, you know, I don't know, three thousand watts of light. At least, like that, it, at room. least. Well, yeah, close to that anyway. <coughs> um, so, and you know, as proud as I am of the scene, I think it looks good. It is sensual and it is sexy. Shooting the thing ain't, you know. But well, we got to make sure we got what we need, mm-hmm. and. So as Travis and I are reviewing it through the IP, so he can't see what I'm seeing. We, it's too small to monitor. Uh, <laughs> we had the headphones on. <laughs> and they were getting into it. It was all acting, but they were getting into it. And I look over and poor Kelly's just like, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Awkward. Every time they replay the video, it replayed the audio as well. And I just listened to it over and over again. <laughs> And we had to like play like every shot because we, we knew yeah. we didn't want to get that many shots, but we knew each one counted. So we needed to fucking get the fuck out. We actually had it was so hot in there. We actually had a a, a fucking script survivor slash grip pass mm-hmm. the fuck out. Yeah, she went yeah. down. Man, Ariel dropped. Ariel, she, <laughs> Ariel had donated blood earlier that day. Which yeah, we should have never let her in the room. I didn't know that. Or I guess <laughs> there's like, my indie tip. She, Don't let somebody <laughs> who donated blood earlier that day into a hot closed set. <laughs> so I'm just like. I'm just like, Ariel's just like coming, walking at me, like almost like classic Scooby-Doo style zombie. And I'm like, oh shit, I hope, I mean, we made very clear, like, hey, this is what's going to be going on in this room. If you're not cool with it, you still got a job, we're not firing you. It's a weird situation we know. If you're not cool with it, you'll get the next thing. You know, no sexual harassment, please sign this paper saying. Uh, and I thought, maybe she had a change of heart, like, oh, I'm not cool with this all of a sudden. But no, it's just her passing the fuck out. And she was like, I gotta get out of here. So, <laughs> like, we, we broke a jailbait that day. We had to we replace really her with yeah. another jailbait. Yeah, Steph came in. Steph came there in. Was, you think there there was a time, actually, when um, we were doing some second unit stuff, and we had uh, Neil with the camera. And we were shooting uh, Jake's scene when, uh, like, after, before he goes to get in the shower, and he shuts his door and, like, picks up his towel, and we were shooting it from inside the room. Mm-hmm. And we'd gone down, and we, were, we started to open the blinds, but, like... The thing that, like, the plastic part broke, like, it snapped in half, and the blinds were supposed to be up for the scene, so I ran and got the gaff tape, and I'm just putting layers of it on the blinds to hold it up, and Josh Young is down there just making jokes the whole time, so I'm, like, bending over laughing, trying to put the blinds up, and, like, we, yeah, we had to get this scene done right away, and he's just being really in the way and just interrupting us with his jokes, and... It sounds it about was, Josh. It was really fun. Well, Josh yeah. is crazy helpful 99% of the time. But like all of us, we all had our moments oh. where we kind of, I'd rather be jokey jokerson than actually <laughs> part of the problem, not the solution. Even even me, especially. Well, yeah. and it's interesting that the first, you know, that, that you mentioned that particular day because that's, I think that's, that happened the same day, the day that everybody remembers, the day that uh, one of our actors that we'd originally cast oh, yeah. uh, mm-hmm. didn't show up yeah. for the film and. Uh, and you can find him here and field promotion. So yeah. yeah, just that everything about that day went totally wrong. But no, all the it, results it wound were good. up great. Yeah, 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 all the results are good. Um, but we were we we learned us some. That's our indie tip: learn stuff. No, it was uh, well, you you had to take off, and we've already mentioned this in the Mikey and Joey one, so we won't birthday. tread the <laughs> tread the tread the ground here. But um, yeah, it was a second unit kind of day. Fortunately, and, most of our problems kind of found their way into that day and stayed in that day. It was it was a set of non-stop kind of funny it ideas was, and yeah. stuff. And there's no, like, there aren't too many just standout stories. There's a lot of just good moments. It was so tense. It was so grueling, but it was fun like 99% of the time. I definitely look back on it with 99% fond memories. Oh, yeah. I mean, there were, there were issues I'm 
would rather went away. <laughs> but that uh, <laughs> I all... can't imagine the Love Rabbit Center doesn't have that. No, I would, it'd kind of be weird. You probably feel you probably feel like you ain't done shit if you had a set where everything just totally went smooth. Right. You know. Chances are good you line up with Battlefield Earth. I bet there were no problems. On I bet it was like, <laughs> hey, smooth sailing. <laughs> hey, is, um, you know, the only potential problem, like, oh my God, is my cod piece all leather shined up? <laughs> sure is, buddy, just in time. Because I was almost not going to wear it. Well, nope, doesn't come to that, because here's your cod piece, Mr. DeVolta. <laughs> so, okay, uh, Andy tips. Hey, let's start out with Kelly. Don't use the microphone on the camera, first of all. Because even if you have one like, going into the camera... Um, as long as you have an external mic, it'll still be good. You can choose where you want the mic to be, and not just from you know the direction the camera is looking. And uh, that is probably what helped us out the most. Oh yeah. Yeah, was that we could put the mic wherever we needed to be, regardless of where the camera was. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And definitely just manipulating the camera itself, and especially if there's any kind of auto thing, which my indie tip should probably be audio is auto is usually not your friend. Uh, it makes noise. Just your handling of the camera, jostling of the camera, mm -hmm. you know. So, I mean, well, you can yeah, ISO that from the camera. Most cameras themselves, just their own internal mechanisms. Make uh -huh. Yeah. As it's made right. Up. Exactly. So. Yeah. That's a good one. That's a good one. And I think a lot of people take that for granted. See? For real. Like, you can make, you can take like a flip. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. These days, you can buy a camera at Target and you can make a decent, yeah. get a decent picture yeah. out of it if you prep properly. Mm -hmm. But, you know, do, even with us, we shot Equinox Blues, and we used the onboard camera on that thing just because we were just it was an experiment. It yeah. was for fun, but as well as it turned out for what we did with it, in, in, at least I think it did. It would have been a hundred times better if we just plugged an external mic yeah. into it. You know what I mean? Like, right. even if you're just learning, you know, that's a that's a great idea. Just mm -hmm. plug a mic in. You know, they think everybody sort of probably thinks that a little bit, but they just don't. They underestimate the value of how important it is. Right. It's, it's really like there are shortcuts you can take. That's not one of them. I want to know how the hell do you stand? I mean, you know, because like we pointed out, this gear is hard to like hold in the same position mm -hmm. for that long. What do you do? I mean, you're, you're you're a pretty fit person. You play hockey, right? Yeah. Okay, there's that. Play hockey if you're gonna do that. But um, <laughs> no, I mean, like, what's what is what are some of the things you can do to like make sure you're not killing yourself out there to make sure that you know what I mean that you're in as comfortable as posture as possible without killing yourself. Well, whenever you can, it helps to. Rest the end of the um, the boom pole on like any part of you your body rather than like just that. holding it up. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes like as long as the mic was in the same spot, I would tilt it a little bit and just like rest sure. it on my hip, or like you know have it in like my sweatshirt pocket and just kind of hold oh, right it on, there. Yeah. Something like or like rest it over my shoulders, mm -hmm. or um, like as soon as they say cut, you can just lower it and just wait. Yeah. It does get pretty tough sometimes. You never complain but... once though. I don't. No. I don't think I ever... Yeah. I said, man, tell me if you need a break. Just tell me you fucking need a break. And I don't think you ever did. Maybe once. Maybe yeah. once. I think just about everybody on set at one point mentioned to me needing a minute. Yeah. Except for you. Yeah. Like, you're the only person that never was like, I'm going to slow down production now because I need a fucking break because I'm leaving. <laughs> like, you know, I mean... And I'll leave. I, 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 I joke about it and we talk about these ridiculous you know, schedules and whatnot, but um, one of my points of pride is that I always try to be as you know, considerate of people as possible and give them the time and mm -hmm. space and shit they need. But really, like, you never... Although once. you did slam her into a fucking wall right outside of NAT when we were shooting Miss Mask. I did, but that was, I don't <laughs> think, on purpose. You got Can any you? tip? Uh, hire a good audio person. Yeah, there you go. Um, for real, I mean, I've said it before, I'll say it again. Picture is great. You want your film to look as professional and wonderful as possible. Um... You need your film to sound professional or no one is going to... It's never going to go anywhere. It, bad sound will make you look a hundred times more amateur than, than bad visuals. Um, you just can't afford to take shortcuts, so make sure you have a good person in the field. Now it's gotten to the point with us working together because we, you know, we've basically... Kelly's got an open invitation to work on whatever she wants her to do forever. But now it's gotten to the point where I just ask her if we're good and I trust her answer. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, that's a great thing to have when you're, you know, working on a flick that you have people. That yeah, just there's that silent nod. <laughs> yep. Or like, as good as it's going to get, you know. Right. Like, <laughs> this is what's going on in this area. We're in the area, middle of so an airport, you... <laughs> so. Mm, um, yeah. There's plenty.